Hello everyone and welcome to my diary and tutorials dedicated to building a drone and developing advanced control systems and algorithms for drones and UAVs from scratch. The goal of this tutorial series is to document all the steps and my thoughts during the process of building the autonomous drone. I'm not going to rely upon the well-established flight controllers such as Pixhawk, Instead, I will use either TIN-C or STM32 microcontrollers to implement the control and estimation algorithms from scratch. The goal is to teach students how to implement advanced control and estimation algorithms such as the Kalman filter, nonlinear controllers, PID controllers, model predictive controllers, etc. Since I'm developing the system from scratch, at this point, I don't know in advance which components such as motors, devices, sensors, microcontrollers will work best together. And the purpose of this series and my diary is to document my trials and errors and to explain and teach students the complete testing and developing process. That is, the complete research and development process will be explained in this video tutorial series. It is very easy to build a drone according to the schematics that someone gives you. However, it's more difficult to build a drone from scratch by not knowing in advance the complete design. Engineering is about developing new technologies and products and testing different options and choosing the most optimal option that will make a trade-off between the costs and the functionality. The first challenge was to construct a quad rotor frame and supports for batteries and motors. There are two approaches. The first approach is to 3D print all the parts. However, at this initial development phase, this might be a time-consuming task. The second approach is to purchase a low-cost drone frame. I decided to follow the second option. I purchased this low-cost robot frame. It's called F450 and the producer is Hawks Work. I have to mention here that I'm not paid by this company to promote their product. The company actually provides a complete drone kit with a Pixhawk controller. However, as I mentioned previously, I'm not interested in a Pixhawk controller. Instead, I'm only interested in the frame that will save some development time for me. Okay, so let's talk about this frame and in general case, if you want to purchase a frame for your drone, you have to consider all these issues. First of all, a nice thing about this frame is that it comes with the upper plate. This is the upper plate. The upper plate is used to support the microcontroller as well as some additional sensors and devices that you will mount on top. Another nice thing about this frame is that it comes with a lower plate. And here it is. This is a very important component. I like this lower plate since it comes with all the power connections. You can see them over here. There are four plus one power connections. All the power connections are welded, or better to say, soldered on the plate. The connections we are using are XT60H. This is the male and this is the female over here. This longest power connector is actually used to connect the battery. Here is the battery I purchased and that I want to test. Then we have these four, one, two, three, four output connectors. These connectors are used to connect the motor driver. So here is the motor driver. And we connect the motor driver over here. You will have four motor drivers. For every motor, we will have a single motor driver. So this will be the motor driver over here for the first motor, for the second one, third and fourth. 
the frame will be mounted on the top of the lower plate. That is, the lower plate will go below. Then you will attach the frame and then on top you will attach the upper plate. I will dedicate a complete video to motors and motor drivers. However, here for the time being, I will just briefly sketch the main idea. This is our lower plate and over here we will attach the motor driver. Then, you can see that the motor driver has three ports. This port will provide power over here. Then, this port, or better to say these three connectors, will be attached to the motor. And I'm doing it right now. And as you might guess, we need a third connector. And here it is. And this connector is used to provide the pulse width modulation signals for controlling this motor through this motor driver. Okay, so how do we properly power motors? You can see that I attached this output power to the driver and it's connected to the motor and over here we have the pulse width modulation connector. Then, I will attach the battery over here. Notice that this is a single battery for the complete drone. This battery will provide power for all three, or better to say all four motors. One attached here, one attached here, one attached over here, and one attached over here. To repeat, you will need four motor drivers and you will need only a single battery. And of course, you will need four motors. As I mentioned previously, there will be a separate video dedicated to motors and motor drivers and how to properly choose the motor and the motor driver. However, for the time being, it's very important to mention the following. I will be testing these three motors. First one, second one, and the third one. And you can see the rating of this motor if I kind of rotate this. Here it is, and here's the name. The common thing among all these three motors is actually this number, 920 kV. You can see over here, 920 kV, 920 kV, and over here you can also see a similar number, 935 kV. Their motors are rated by using the kV constant. The number kV is the velocity constant of the motor. And this constant is used to estimate the RPM of the motor. The unit of this constant is the RPM divided by volt. So from practical point of view, 920 kV means that if we provide one volt, to this motor, then the rotor of this motor will spin with a rate of 920 revolutions per minute. On the other hand, if we provide 10 volts to this motor, then the RPM will be 9200. These motors actually have low kV constant. I deliberately selected these motors since Motors with lower kV constant can lift more. This number over here on the motor driver is actually the current rating. I had two options and I will test both of these options. Currently, I will be using 40 amps driver. However, I will also test 30 amps drivers. This rating means that this driver is rated for motors that can consume 40 amps. However, I don't believe that these motors will consume actually 40 amps, maybe maximum 15 amps or something like that, maybe even 10 or less. However, I decided to be on the safe side. Another thing that you have to consider when designing a drone is the propeller and the propeller size. This propeller is actually 10 by 4.5. 10 means that the length, or better to say the diameter, of the propeller is 10 inches. And 
a pitch of this propeller is 4.5. A pitch of a propeller means the number of inches it moves forward in a single revolution. There are two types of propellers. There are clockwise propellers and the counterclockwise propellers. Similarly, there are clockwise motors and counterclockwise motors. You need to mount the clockwise propeller on the clockwise motor. Similarly, you will need to mount the counterclockwise propeller on the counterclockwise motor. The clockwise motor will be placed here as well as here. The counterclockwise motor will be placed here as well here. That is, they should be opposite of each other. Clockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise, counterclockwise. So how to recognize if a motor is a clockwise or a counterclockwise? Well, you can easily do that. First of all, look for the description. This means that the motor is clockwise. However, look at this motor. It doesn't have a description. So how do we know if this motor is clockwise or counterclockwise? Well, here's how we identify them. Clockwise motors actually have a hole over here at the top. And you can see it over here. There is a small hole. On the other hand, the counterclockwise motors don't have a hole. Instead, they have a flat top. So this is a counterclockwise motor. Another thing to keep in mind when building a drone and when buying an already built frame is the size of the frame. This frame is rated as F450 frame. This actually means that the distance from this motor shaft to this motor shaft, that is the diameter, is 450 millimeters. This is very important for several reasons. First of all, over here I have a 10 inch propeller. This means that the length or the diameter of the propeller is 10 inches. So if I put my propeller over here together with my motor, I will still have enough space over here to mount my electronics. Of course, you will mount something below also. Okay, that's all for today and see you in my next video tutorial.